Hello everyone. Before we get to the lesson, let's do this warm up together. And I want you to keep your answers secret. So follow these steps, keep the numbers in your head, and we'll see if I can guess your number. Step one, choose a whole number between one and 10. Next, multiply that number by two. Multiply that answer by five. Divide that answer by the number you chose in step one. Subtract seven from your answer. Okay, you should have an answer. Keep it secret. Don't tell anyone. Was your answer three? I know it is. Magic. Well, of course it wasn't really magic. I can't read your mind. But I led you through something called a function. That's a series of steps that I led you through, and each time you went through the next step, you did a different calculation. And if you follow calculations in a specific order, that's called a function. And we are going to talk about what the word function means in this lesson. And this is a big part of what this whole math course is about, is functions and their applications. So the object of this lesson is just to know what that word means, and we're also going to start applying how to use functions and how to recognize functions so that uh, we can do more interesting stuff with functions in the rest of this course. So let's just get some terminology first. The first word is input. Input is what goes into the machine. Here's my picture of a machine. Input is whatever you put into the machine. Something happens inside the machine and then something comes out. That's the output. Output is what comes out of the machine. So get this image stuck in your mind. Input is what you put in. Something happens. And then output is what comes out. Here's an example of a machine. It's a vending machine. So if you're unfamiliar with how a vending machine works, you put money in, you press the button for whatever snack you want, and then the snack comes out the drawer at the bottom and you take it out. So if we think about this machine as a function, we need to understand what the input and the output are. The input is the button that you press. The output is the type of snack that comes out. So the question can be raised, what item will you receive if you insert money and press A1? So here's the button A1. If I press that button, what item will I receive? Well, we look over here, A1, that's the fruit smoothie. So you're gonna get a delicious fruit smoothie out of a vending machine, how wonderful. What if you press C2? Well, here's C2, the button, C2, oh, apple juice, that's what you're going to get as your output. Now, if the machine is filled properly, what will happen if you pay and press A1 or C2 again? Well, if I press A1, I already answered that. I, I would expect to get a fruit smoothie, and if I press C2 again, well, I'd expect to get the same thing, apple juice. This is, of course, if the machine is functioning properly we will get the same result every time I give the same input. So if you press the same button twice, will you get two different items? Well, not if the machine is functioning properly. You would expect the same output for the same input. Well, what about this? With this machine, does each input have an output? Well, every, every button that I press, A1, A2, A3, uh, they will all get me a snack. That's the output. Are there any buttons that I would press that would not give an output? You might be looking at this one over here. It says sold out. That means you're not going to get any snack if you press B1. So if I press B1, I don't have an output. So the idea I want you to take from this example is that in order for a machine to function properly, you will get the same output whenever you put the same input in. 
So if you put the same input in, you'll get the exact same output every time. It won't change. And sometimes you can have an input, but you might not get an output. Now, in a math context, a machine works with numbers. And this machine here that I'm picturing has a rule. The rule is the thing that you do to the input. So in this example, if I input 3 into my machine, inside the machine we add 2, what's going to come out but 5? 3 plus 2 is 5. Now I can change the input. I don't have to input the same number every time. So what would happen if I input 1? Well, input 1, add 2, what comes out? 3. Next, the input is 2. Input 2, add 2, out comes 4. Input 3, add 2, out comes 5. Input 4, add 2, out comes 6. Now this might look familiar. In previous math classes you would call this a table of values. Now I'd like you to take some time and work on this on your own. So the question is, for each input, use the rule to find the output. So here I have a picture of a machine. The rule is minus 2. Here I have a different machine. The rule is the number of letters in the word. And the third machine, the number of vertices in the shape. So for your input-output table of values, Take your different inputs, put them into the machine, and write down what your output would be. So I'd like you to pause this video, try the question, and then check back in to see how you did. I'm serious. Pause the video. Try it. And now that you've tried it, you can check your answers. You might have had a little trouble with uh, this first one here. Uh, when the input is negative 1, and your mi the rule is minus 2, so it's negative 1, minus 2. Think about a thermometer. You're starting at minus 1, and you're going down 2 more, so you're getting more negative. That's why we end up with minus 3 there. The other ones, I think, are uh, pretty self-explanatory, but if you run into issues, please let me know before you move on to the next part of the lesson. Now I want to go back to that idea of a vending machine. Let's say you have a vending machine. You input a dollar, you press 1, and the output is sometimes a drink, sometimes nachos, and sometimes you don't get anything. Would you say this machine functions properly? Well, no. You would expect, as we already discussed, to get the same output every time you press the same button. And that would be a better option. So we would say if the results are random, meaning you don't know what's going to come out of the machine every time you push the same button, that would lead us to believe that the uh, machine is not functioning properly. But if you have a predictable outcome, you know what you're going to get every time you push the same button, we would say the machine is functioning properly. So I'm, I'm emphasizing the word functioning because that leads to what we call these machines in math and that is, of course, a function. So now, try this on your own. Is the machine functioning properly? And, of course, what we mean by that is, does it give one specific output for each input? Are you going to get a predictable outcome for each input? If yes, then it's functioning properly. If no, if you can't predict what the output's going to be, or there's more than one possibility, then we would say it's not functioning properly. So pause the video and think through these, whether each machine is functioning properly or not, and then uh, check back in to see how you did. So pause the video and try this question. Well, here we are, five more than the input. Let's say I put the number five in. Five more is 10. There's only one way that we can get an answer. It's only 10. So that functions properly. The input multiplied by 2. Well, whatever number we put in, we multiply it by 2. There's one answer, a predictable outcome. And down here, the input's country of birth. Well, no matter who you put in, 
They were only born in one country, so we get a predictable outcome. Now the rest are not functioning properly, as you can see by the large red X's that I put on the screen here. Uh, this first one, the rule is two away from the input. So an example, if my input was five, two away from five is either three or seven. Both of those numbers are two away from the number five. So because we have an unpredictable outcome, uh, we would say this machine is not functioning properly. The input's grandparent. Well, each person has more than one grandparent, so uh, there's an unpredictable output. And the input's coworker. Well, you 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 work with more than one person, more than likely. So, for whoever you put into the machine as input, you don't know which coworker is going to be spit out as the output. So, unpredictable outcome means not functioning properly. So, the word function means you can think of it as the machine that works properly. A function takes an input and gives exactly one output. It follows a function rule. So the rule is what happens in the machine. The input is what you put into the machine and there's only going to be one output, one predictable output for every time you put an input into the machine. Now this next question, I'd like you to try this on your own. Write the function rule. Find the output for each input. So for each machine, for each function pictured, I want you to write down what the rule is and then complete each table of values using that rule. So pause the video and try it. So the rule is written inside each machine. I just rewrote it kind of in a math way. The first one, add three, so that's plus three. Take your input, plus three. So if my input is two, plus three, that's five. Three plus three is six. Zero plus three is three. Minus three plus three is zero. Hopefully you got that one okay. The next rule is multiply by three, then subtract one. So take your input, times three then minus one. Two times three is six, minus one is five. Three times three is nine, minus one is eight. Zero times three is zero, minus one is minus one. And minus three times three is minus nine. Minus one is minus 10. Maybe you had trouble with that one. Think of your thermometer. If you're at minus nine and then you go down one more, you're going more negative. Here, we're cubing. Maybe you didn't know what cubing meant. Just a reminder, cubing means you're, you have an exponent of three. So if it's two cubed, that means two times two times two, that's eight. Three cubed does not mean three times three, it means three times three times three. Three times three is nine, times three again is 27. Zero cubed is zero times zero times zero, that's my zero. And minus three times minus three is positive nine times minus 3 again, now we're at minus 27. Just look out for those little tricky ones with the negative signs and you should be okay. So hopefully by now you get the idea of what a function is and that a function has exactly one output for every input. Uh, if you keep those ideas straight in your mind, you should be okay as you work on this practice sheet. If you have any questions, please reach out. Otherwise, uh, enjoy your practice.